welcome. Good morning, Berlin. Good afternoon to our viewers in Asia. Welcome to our Asia Berlin community event uh, together with Berlin Senate and NPACT. Um, my name is Elena Volkova. I'm a program manager at NPACT and we support entrepreneurs at different stages of their entrepreneurial journey with uh, programs and mentor network and um, we are excited to host another um, Asia Berlin fireside chat today um, together with Berlin Senate and uh, we have a really great program today um, we have Enrico Jacob managing partner and COO of Awesome Capital Group um, together with Molly Baum the founder and CEO of W Lounge and Magda Group they will talk about the German Chinese investment platform and uh, the activities in both startup ecosystem and I would like to welcome our partner, um, Dr. Reiner Zeider. He's the head of unit for international cooperation at the Berlin Senate, and he will share more about Asia Berlin activities. Welcome, Reiner. Thank you, Elena. Thank you very much, Anpak, for having me here today again. Uh, and we have many great news today to communicate. Um, the first uh, great news today is that it's Elena's birthday, so happy birthday, Elena. Uh, <laughs> and now you see there are people in the room. Uh, and the second, so the last great news will come at the end, so it will be a surprise. Um, but what I can communicate today is that we are getting for the Asia Berlin Summit on the 21 to 27 uh, September. We will have uh, very big and important speakers. Uh, already confirmed, uh, so you already know it will be a physical event with online uh, reach out worldwide. And we are very happy that we have now the confirmation of the board members of Siemens and SAP uh, to contribute to the to the opening panel. Uh, so it will be Thomas Sauer Essig from SAP and um, Cedric Neike from uh, Siemens to contribute uh, the, the CEO or the president of the DIHK, the German Chambers of Commerce, uh, Eric Schweitzer, will open together with our mayor, Senator uh, Mara Muna Pop, the event. We will have a great panel with great panelists, also from Asia, of course, um, during uh, the 21 September uh, opening event. But we already know that it's not just the visibility in Berlin, and we are very happy that there are lots of speakers from um, Asia also coming to the event physically and uh, online. So, of course, due to Corona, we don't know exactly who will be present uh, there, but we know already some, we have some confirmation of people who will attend, even from Asia, the summit in Berlin. Uh, so it will be a, a great and exciting experience for us as well, because now the online thing is, is very important for reaching out and will be a custom also uh, during the next Asia Berlin Summit events. And we, we are seeing also that uh, it's not only the summit that's very attractive for our Asian partners, but the ecosystem in Berlin is getting more and more attractive. And I think the example of today, which will be talked about by Mali and Enrico later, is, is a very good example. We had uh, um, last investors chat, we had the SBI investment fund that was, was to be created in, in Berlin. But we, we have news and uh, very interesting reactions also from Korea, from Hong Kong, from other parts of the Philippines that are going to invest in the Berlin startup ecosystem also to bring the know-how and the experience back to their countries. So I think that's also very great news for us that there is a more, more awareness um, for Berlin uh, for in Asia, which has not been the case several years ago. And also, of course, due to Brexit and also due to the corona management, I think Berlin is coming maybe as a, as a kind of winner out of the corona battle uh, within the European Union. So I think that there are already some great news, great experiences, and I'm very happy to give you another great news at the end of the, the fireside chat. But now I would like to, um, to hand over to Mali and Enrico, and I would like to see you all at the Asia Berlin Summit 21 to 27 September, physically or online. So thank you very much for having me here. Hello, good morning. Hello, Mali. 
I'm very proud and honored to be here today, and thank you so much, Dr. Rainer Zeider, to present the beautiful of the ecosystem in Berlin, and I'm even more proud to have you and Rico Jacob with me today. Uh, actually, we met several times in a different occasions and events, and at some point we said, let's sit down and talk, and I believe this is the magic of what's happening in Berlin, because great local people and great people that are coming from the outside actually contribute for the growth and for the success of the ecosystem. Thank so, you so much, Mali, for this introduction. Thank and you. And a pleasure for me to be here, thank you. Absolutely. So, Enrico, maybe you will start with presenting yourself. Yeah, for sure. Um, actually, we started in 2018, end of 2018, uh, with the idea of Awesome Capital. The founder, Andreas Wieniawski, um, was a former partner of Early Bird, and he came up with the idea to bring uh, together closer the digital ecosystems of China and Europe, because we really think there are so many opportunities to work closer together with Chinese tech enterprises as we see they are rising and rising. And when we talk with European ventures on the other side, they all want to get access to China and to work closer together and to see all these opportunities. And that's the initial idea of um, Awesome. And since then we uh, developed a lot um, with different, uh, in different fields. We build up a team in China. We traveled a lot to China and really to get known to this market. Not only China especially, but this whole Southeast Asian market is also really interesting for us. But um, for now, we are really focusing on China and see which opportunities are coming up in the future. So when you said traveling a lot to China, you're actually kind of like uh, making me a flashback because, you know, I had a company while I was still in Tel Aviv that was, the R&D was in Tel Aviv and the production was in China, in Shenzhen, Dongguan area, uh, very close to Hong Kong. And back and forth to China, it's something that came very close to my heart because while working with Chinese people, you learn a lot about do and don't and a lot about the culture. And even as a European, we think that we know what we want to achieve. Sometimes it has to fit to the culture. And I would like to ask you, or a bit challenging you, um, why do you think at all that there is an openness in both sides and how you actually be the bridge and bring success? Yeah, first of all, I think what's really important that we are open to China and to be open for this whole ecosystem. China is different, of course, and there are many challenges that we can work together closer, but we can learn a lot um, from them and they can learn a lot from us. And that's really important to know that and China is all about execution and trial and error and to do things first and uh, try them and just uh, uh, fit them over time. but. Um, for us, um, we really think that uh, yeah, China becomes maybe the next Silicon Valley, we will see. Uh, maybe it's already there. Um, when you look on Shenzhen, as you already mentioned, it's a great place to be there. Um, but um, we as Europe, we should really be open for China and to see which opportunities there are. And um, from a cultural perspective, there are, uh, of course, language barriers and other barriers we have to, um, yeah, to work on it. But um, I think we as Germans, we are a really open culture and we are open for new things. And that's, uh, I think, uh, a great opportunity for us. And this is a huge message coming up from today. We are open. And as much as I'm talking about Berlin everywhere, Berlin is really the disruptive, I would say, hub. And I do believe, as coming to Berlin six years ago, yeah. that Berlin is really open and growing. And I would say getting more and more ready for welcoming um, outside or foreigner investors and corporates to enjoy the local innovation as well and contribute. Yeah, because I think eventually that, it's a win-win situation. Yeah, I think that's the power of Berlin. We are really a melting pot of different uh, cultures. It's also the uh, power of the Silicon Valley. There are so many different yes. cultures at this place. And um, we in Berlin, we are successful because we have so many different cultures here from India and also from China. There are a lot of Chinese people are working in Berlin startups already. Um, and they are bringing so much know-how and intelligence to to um, to Europe or especially to Berlin. And there are also so many Chinese people who studied abroad and they are now coming back to China. And there's 
like a new culture evolving, especially from the younger generation, and that's where we focus on. This is fantastic, and we can already name like, some success stories like TikTok or Tencent that's showing a lot of willingness and already starting um, activities and, and invested already in the past. We know in, in the German, in even Berlin um, um, startups. Yeah. But I want to touch something else. You know, when we dive into China as a company, immediately we build a team people in the ground that absolutely translate the language but translate the culture. Yeah. So you mentioned when we talked um, that you have people in the ground yeah. that actually presenting. So can you share a bit, uh, can you also share your journey there but maybe give some tip for our listener also from Asia and also from Europe, from Berlin as well, um, how you, you know, start the, the, the early steps. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the most crucial thing to get successful in China because um, yeah, there are so many examples like the big German enterprises there in China for many years now, but they did not really uh, focus on building up huge teams there. And we think it's really important to also understand this market and to get to know this market better to really build up a Chinese team there. And um, we really focused the last year to build a team where we can trust in, uh, where we have operations How many people in. people you have there? Eight already, yeah, in Shanghai and in Shenzhen in different areas. And uh, we are in touch with them currently via uh, WeChat and other um, uh, video communication tools mm -hmm. uh, because these days it's not possible to China, yeah. uh, travel to China, that's a little bit sad. But maybe they will come um, to the Azure Pacific. Yeah, actually <laughs> I'm really missing China because yeah. <laughs> it's always crazy to be there and we, yeah. we uh, I personally learn a lot from every time when I'm there. I see you like so the many, intense? Yeah, the intense, <laughs> the execution and there every time when I'm uh, when I be there, uh, there are so many new uh, technological innovations. I visited so many startups and there are so many impressions we could bring to Berlin and to European startup ecosystem. That's also the idea of us and really to think what are the opportunities, not in general, but also in detail for different business models, how we can evolve different business models to another stage. Of course, the, the target group in China or the consumers are different and also the whole market is different. But we uh, think how to adapt these kind of business models to Europe and to bring them closer to the uh, European startup ecosystem. And this is a very good point to start with because how you actually can adapt. You know, in China it's fast growth by all means in yeah. any price. I mean, for me, it reminds me the Israeli ecosystem. This is why it's very easy yeah. to, you know, bridge uh, Tel Aviv in China. But can you share a bit more about this? Yeah, of course. So the um, like the uh, pace in China is a lot faster than in, in Europe, of course. That's what we know. Mm -hmm. But um, the intelligence behind is that we really think how we can use this pace and adapt it to Europe. So it's not about uh, targeting the same market or bringing the same business models and the same business ideas to Europe. So really think how we can put different parts of different business models, like in e-commerce, like in marketplaces, like in autonomous driving and so many other areas, how we can take them to European startups and bring them in, uh, test them, piloting them, maybe also to uh, think the other way around when we have new ideas in, in Europe to test them or pilot them in China. Like BMW, they have uh, recently started a car sharing platform in China and they are piloting this solution there. So it's really a piloting ground because the regulations are a little bit different and they can Much test so many open. things um, and how to bring them to Europe successfully. And, and do you think it's easier to communicate in a government level to get those license and, and you know permission to enter? Of course, I think okay. you, you have also, uh, also in Germany you have to work closer together with the government yes. to bring up new solutions. Uh, in China definitely uh, too, yes, you have to really understand the political system but really just focus on innovation and that's important for us. And, um, the other and it's a win-win situation, this is yeah. how they see it. Yeah. Usually they really like the foreigner minds that willing to contribute, I yeah. believe. Yeah. This is what I experienced. Yeah. And it's not only that European founders uh, want to 
be in China. It's also about Chinese tech companies mm -hmm. which want to be in Europe. Definitely, they are so interested in um, cooperating. Tell me more about this. Like, can you give me or share with me some concrete example that you saw someone that built success stories or successful company in China and say, yes, my next stop is Europe. Yeah, it's. So you can watch to the biggest enterprises like Tencent, Alibaba, like okay. Tencent recently announced, I think last of uh, end of last year, something like that. They want to invest about three billion dollars in Europe, especially in, in Germany, how to yeah. develop their cloud business to Europe and build up other business cases. But you can also talk to smaller um, business cases like in the field of autonomous driving, electric car manufacturers and yeah, robotic companies, they all want to come to Europe, not because of this huge scale. Of course, Europe is a little bit smaller than China and they have a, such a huge market to grow in there, but they know Europe is still really strong in so many different areas, also, especially in industrial tech areas, and they can really learn from us and they can adapt our solutions to their solutions. And I think for them is also, especially in the EV field, and they want to come to Europe, especially to Germany. We have such a strong auto, uh, automotive industry and they want to be a part of it and to learn from it, but also to say we are also successful in Germany. And um, yeah, we are always in the, the middleman between sto those two um, fields. Uh, of course, we are a European answer to it. We are more focused on the like the development of Europe, but um, we uh, also focus on the Chinese side, it's always two sides of the Eventually point. it's a win-win situation. Yeah. yeah, I mean, from my point of view is, um, you know, I always say that Berlin is a great access to Europe. Yeah. Here you can test a lot of things, here yeah. you will probably meet a lot of um, innovation um, hubs, for those corporates that you already mentioned, this is the old industry here that we can contribute for a very early stage yeah. or even not yeah. so early stage innovation to step in and uh, going back to be very welcoming. But in a different angle, you know, uh, Magda Group is a, a fund of fund. This is something yeah. we are raising and for me in person to be uh, in, in, as, as a founder on this, the reason came because I worked with China. I was very involved in New York and yes, originally I'm from Tel Aviv and there's so much to contribute, so yeah. much to have here, to, to take the good stuff and to bring those to here. So for me, and I think we are kind of like talking on the same bridge, but we are walking in a, in a different uh, side because most of the things that we are doing is working with the local family yeah. office, attract them to invest in the local in Europe and absolutely going from Berlin uh, to Europe and you are doing the opposite, which is quite interesting. Also for me, it was very interesting to hear at the beginning that you focus the, 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 the energy on bringing those family offices, Mittelstown, those network that's surrounding yourself and find the willingness to really put their money into the Chinese technology. So I know we talked a bit about this also yesterday and I really wanted to emphasize more about this because this is very interesting, not only for the Asian market, but also for what's happening here. Yeah. I, and I think Corona also raised that as well. Yeah, we're always talking about that China is so developing fast, they're so successful and they have so many innovative business models. But uh, as you already said, it's really important to focus on the local sphere because also here when we talk with corporates, Europe is not bad in what we do. We also have so many good and uh, suitable technologies for so many different areas. Bad. But um, <laughs> yeah, but we can put more focus on execution, be more faster maybe and that's what we can learn from the Chinese market. Um, how we, which kind of technologies we can use here and which kind of business models. So we talked about the win-win situation, but eventually go without saying, you put another card on the table, which is, hey, technology in China is growing faster. Yeah. And this is where we're taking our network and give them the door or open the door for them for this success. Yeah. which means they are after IPO. 
or, yeah. or pre-IPO yeah. or in between. Yeah. Um, I really want you to convince me or us why you think this is the right way. Yeah, I think uh, China, so when you talk with um, like CEOs from different companies, they are of course working together with China. but. Yeah they always have challenges to get into this market, with which kind of people they have to talk to, where to go and so on. And this really needs a middleman behind it. Because there are so many uh, cultural difficulties, other ways of managing different things. And that's actually the, 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 um, the, the reason for us in Capital. That's why we build up ours in Capital. Mm -hmm. Because, because really you saw the need. We saw the need and to really think uh, about China in a different way. because. We in Europe, we do not really know what is going on there. Uh, we uh, really were close together with China, of course, and uh, our well, uh, wealth is also built up, uh, especially on a small part, on you know, uh, Chinese the market, because all the companies are producing their uh, goods there. But um, I think we have to be more closer to really the culture, to be really more open in this market and to travel more often there and be there for many weeks and years to work there to f to uh, get to know more closer to these huge Chinese enterprises like Tencent, JD, Huawei and all these other players and yeah. um, because there are so many smart people working there where we can learn a lot from it and to bring them back to Europe um, to think about it how we can take these uh, opportunities for us and um, yeah I think that's actually all I mean, you built already a successful platform for this. It's yeah. already existing. Yeah. So treat me right now as a family office, as a yeah. Mittelstand from yeah. Germany. And you're sitting next to me. Show me the way how can I actually invest in, pro in company and technology that yeah. already I, made I think the, 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 the most crucial thing of, of something is not only a communication platform or a just a network, it's all about the money, of course. And uh, we, first of all, thought to build up a public market fund. Mm -hmm. It's our first product. Uh, we built it up in March uh, this year, where we invest in Chinese technology companies after IPO. Mm -hmm. um, these are companies, because when you focus on the um, technology fear in China, um, the IPO duration is only three to five years, so uh, the technology companies are going public so fast. And there are so many opportunities for us to learn from them and also to invest in them. So that's why we built up this first product where everybody, actually all of us here, can invest in. That's if he has the knowledge. If, if he hasn't, we have the knowledge exactly. uh, because of our team and our mm -hmm. understanding of the market and we will in the future build up several uh, different um, like business perspectives around them, different kind of funds, different kind of uh, investment vehicles, but also like different industries, as, different well. industries of, as well. We are of course venture capital guys, so that's where we come from. Yeah. Um, but that's really the diff difference also. Um, the IPO market in China is much more venture capital than here because, as I already mentioned, three to five years, it's really short. And uh, yeah, so... Uh, so how you actually allocated those winners yeah, in we, China? We just uh, differentiate between two different categories. We focus on proven winners and rising stars. So the proven winners are, as I already mentioned, Tencent, Alibaba, JD. These are all part of our fund and they are rising and rising. Um, but on the other hand, there are so many small tech companies we focus on and they are also part of our fund. We are selecting them wisely. We are uh, putting them a lot of research on it. And You're doing so-called due diligence. Yeah, due diligence. We have a long investment process to really think about where we put the uh, the investors' money because this is not our our money. Yeah. We really focus on performance, of course, but yeah. also this risk balance. Um, there are so many, of course, political issues and so on which are going on these days. Yeah. So we always have to focus on this risk balance and look on how we can bring the best performance to our investors. We do have last five minutes, and yeah. I have so many questions. But where do you see awesome capital? In two years, I think we what we want to be is uh, the first and most successful investment platform between Europe and China. Um, <clears throat> we want to build up an ecosystem between, between those two countries with 
different formats to bring um, Chinese tech entrepreneurs to Europe, to bring uh, Europe uh, tech entrepreneurs to China, and to really strengthen this bridge uh, to bring also this awareness of China. Because everybody always looks to Silicon Valley. Of course, Silicon Valley it's is easier. great. Yeah. And Silicon Valley has brought us so many innovations, but I think there is a change going on. Absolutely. Um, I, Silicon Valley will still exist, but um, I think beside ByteDance, TikTok and other Chinese players, there are so many coming to Europe and we should to be aware about this market because uh, China will become more and more successful. We, can, uh, we cannot avoid this. Um, it's more like how we can use this for us and how we can bring up a win-win situation and um, yeah, actually uh, an international investment platform with different parts of business areas, um, team in both, both countries and yeah, I think I'm everything absolutely. will develop over time. I'm absolutely looking forward to see it happening because, you know, as W Launch Founder, this is exactly what we aim for, yeah. you know, bring the good stuff from all ecosystem eventually yeah. because this is how you build a success story and eventually unicorn together you have like you know you have those that pushing yeah. and you have those that sitting what, down and, and, and planning not what, too much yeah what would be really great for me is to see a German tech company um, developing successful in China and does an IPO there that would be really amazing for me personally because we uh, this really shows that our European technology is not dead we have uh, so many good innovations and technologies and to really show that China is different, yes, but also a huge opportunity for us. It's also gaining trust yeah. between it's the ecosystem. It's gaining trust and yeah, when you, there are so many German companies which are really successful in China. Yes, um, so, absolutely. And we have to do the next step now and to focus on technology companies, bring them to China, evolve them there. And it's working a lot with the younger generation. We do have smart, talent people here. What it needs for them, also for the mindset and education, but also financially or talent uh, acquisition, to make this journey to do an IPO in China? I think it's all about the network and to know where to go to and which kind of things you have to keep attention on and how you should adapt your business model and um, which partners you need um, and so many other different things but I think it's all about focus and yeah. of course not every business model is suitable for China okay. that's of course when you look on the fintech space or e-commerce this China is so far ahead from us but there are the areas industrial tech robotics autonomous driving and uh, these fields so um, yeah it's all about keep focus and just going there and just try it out and find the right partners. And last question for us today, um, at least between us, because yeah. then we will have a Q&A session. Um, what we need to, to do as a local, as European, as a Berliner, in a politic level, in an ecosystem level, as a VC, as a fund of fund, as a, an ecosystem builder, all of this working quite well already together, yeah. which already you know took some time because Berlin did a huge um, progress. Um, what we need to do to grow up our startup with this mindset locally before even open them for this huge market as China? I think first of all, as we already mentioned, Berlin is already open. Yes. We have made it to be more open for Chinese people to maybe promote this place here that more Chinese people are coming to Berlin and to learn from them and what's always a smart idea when you really want to go to China to speak with Chinese investors and um, how they think about this business case how they um, think about the successfulness yeah. of this market and um, yeah so really be open speak with Chinese investors with Chinese partners and learn from them um, so we need to shift for, for Q&A oh, and uh, already finished. first of all, thank you so much. Thank you, and, Mali. Uh, thank you for sharing a lot of yeah. insights and I hope we gave also a, a takeaway or tips for those that really want to learn, to collaborate yeah. and to grow with and in China because uh, from my experience, 
this is the next level. Yeah. Um, that was a super early adapter and phenomenal experience for me to work for eight years uh, with China. But it's still pioneering. Uh, for us, it's still pioneering. We were one of the single players in Europe which are doing that, what we do. Uh, but I think there will so much coming up in the future yeah. Um, because, yeah, China gets more important for us. And they're also getting more and more open yeah. and welcome, which is yeah. absolutely different. So maybe we will follow up some questions and lead me how much the time is allowing us. Um, what is the what are the key barriers for European com companies entering China? Um, or to get investment in China, which is usually that topic we're talking about, because yeah. you're going to China, like as an Israeli, they are going to China for capital. Yeah. So it's actually a very relevant question. Actually, the, the answer is pretty simple. Uh, mm -hmm. You should be interesting for China. And uh, the first step is, as I already uh, said, um, you have to think about how to adapt your business model to China where to go, which partners you need. Um, you should always talk with the four tech, big tech players like Tencent and Alibaba, how they think about because they're one of the biggest investors in China. Sequoia is also uh, the biggest investor in China uh, in the venture capital space and they were really early in China and you also have to speak with these huge investors how they think because they really know the market really good and where to invest in and so on and also what you can always do is to search for similar business cases in China how they are how they uh, succeed in the past and how to um, yeah adapt your business case or to partner even with them and how the synergies are so um, yeah I think and you have to be mature enough to do that because when you're early stage venture it's really difficult to go to China yeah. uh, you have to at least be in the growth stage so raise already series A series B round um, to to put this expansion plans on the table and this is exactly the point I wanted to bring from my side because Chinese are almost they don't know how to invest small ticket you know yeah. like here in Europe or in Germany like you can see sometimes venture capitals are putting 50k yeah. so if it's not millions yeah. it's too early for China yeah. and this is very very good message that we we can send today and one thing that I can tell you because you mentioned uh, very well about Tencent and other players but if you dive into the ecosystem there are many 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 other players yeah. Uh, that grew up and not necessarily only the biggest name but the most important thing that I've learned working with Chinese if if you are coming and, and communicating with Chinese um, investor if they are not putting an offer quite fast it's not for you because if Chinese are very keen to invest in you yeah. they're doing this very fast yeah. it can be one or two months yeah. which we don't know that fast or speed here yeah so we tend to say that is okay yeah but in Chinese mindset it can kind of like blended to a lot of conversation building relationship but this is not the culture in, in China that's if true. they're really keen that's and, and interesting after absolutely several weeks yeah. you will see an offer but on the table what we have to say is that the Chinese venture capital scene has changed a lot over the last 10 years because Five years ago, they have thrown money on the market, on different e-commerce, marketplace and all some other business cases, but it showed that they were not really successful and they lost so much money. That's why they uh, really focus more on the due diligence part and they really think twice or three times about an investment. And this really changed that uh, venture capital is more difficult to get in China these days, uh, but it's still yeah more um, like a more major th scene than in Europe because everybody knows about venture capital in China. Yeah, and I think on top of what you just mentioned, you have to have the local people. Yeah. Because they are the bridging. This is how you build the trust faster. Yeah. Let's say. And I think it's always because you you ask me what a startup should do. Yeah. It's also about thinking about hiring. Chinese people to your team because they bring always this Chinese DNA to your team and they are so smart, yes. they are so ambitious, yeah, they fun. work so hard, uh, especially maybe on the C level. Um, yes. It's always a good idea. So how you hire the first one? 
Uh, actually, it was just randomly because we met him uh, in a Chinese event. And in China? Yeah. yeah. And we've done some pilot projects together and saw how these projects are evolving. And uh, for us, it was quite a good time. We uh, have done a lot of successes in China already. And then we thought, okay, that's the right partner for us. And then we um, raised the part, uh, team there. So you actually gave them him incentive? Or it's kind of like treat them as one of your team player or made him a partner? Because it's, it's also touching the culture. It's one part of our team. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another question we have here, which is very relevant, and you know what? Maybe we should start with this. It's about the risk. If I'm a middle stand, uh, although I trust you and you are the yeah. bridge, how can I know that I'm not taking an extra risk by investing in Chinese innovation? Yeah, that's always that's always a difficult question. It's it's not easy to answer it. Um, yes. First of all, what I would say or what I would recommend is to really go to the Chinese market step by step to do first projects there, maybe to first speak with first partners and to do the first small investment, then to learn from it, then to do the second investment. So it's really a developing process. But of course, it's always a challenge, but um, China knows that and they getting more open for foreign investments um, because actually they are really open for foreign investments in China. Um, nobody knows about that, but they're really open that uh, European companies are investing in China, but you really need a middleman for it. Yeah. It's not that easy. Yeah, it's a lot of culture barriers, but yeah. absolutely when there is success, there's no culture issue anymore. Yeah. I mean, I've seen that several times. But let me uh, approach to our audience because we actually open and all my and all your questions actually getting into my cell phone. So feel free to drop a line, send some questions because I think um, you can gain a lot of knowledge um, from Enrico, absolutely, also for from myself, you. because like, been there, done that, did a lot of mistakes, <laughs> learned, and keeping, uh, at least from my side, and I know you're very active as well, um, very alert and, and active with Chinese market. Um, another question from my side, because there's no way I'm doing anything without talking about diversity. Yeah. Uh, without talking about oh. the issue of how you build the right format to raise success. Mm -hmm. And we all know that this is an issue in Germany. This is an yeah. issue in Europe more than others. And how you feel about this when it comes to Asia, when it comes to China? Um, that's a good question because <laughs> um, when you visit Chinese startups, there are many, many female founders, um, really many. Um, I think almost 40% or something like that. We have in Germany 8%. I just <laughs> yes. saw the number, it's yeah. a yeah. huge difference. And yeah. um, I don't know the reason for it, um, but it could be um, that, first of all, the government puts um, a lot of focus on incorporating companies or on the innovation scene. So it's much more common that you found a startup in China. And I think it's also a cultural thing. Um, women are really treated equally um, in this you society. You felt that, you saw it. I think so, yeah. There are so many tough and ambitious um, Chinese female founders and they are really smart. And maybe even smarter than uh, sometimes men, of course. but. Um, I think the scene is more open, but I do not really know the reason for it. Um, for Let me, me help you with the reason. Yeah. <laughs> because <Please help. laughs> I think when it comes to professionality, yeah. no one cares about the gender anymore. That's true. So it's, we're sitting in a round table, we just need to bring more, ta more chairs. Yeah. Exactly. To open the door. And, and from my experience, you know, when I even work with factories, a lot of factory owners and manager were women and yeah. I was always scared when they were yeah. women because they were tougher yeah. and um, I think it's also when you look on Chinese uh, uh, students yeah. uh, who study abroad it's more than 50% I think even 60% of Chinese uh, women are studying abroad so that's crazy so this is the, the, the eager to be successful yeah I think so more yeah. 
I think so. Okay. Yes. It's like burning. It's burning. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, another question. It's maybe more general question, but actually very smart because we mentioned Berlin, and Berlin is part of Germany, yeah. which is part of Europe, uh, and different layoffs support the startup. And uh, share with us a bit. We don't have a lot of time uh, about China. Which cities? Where to start? I mean, Shenzhen is very different than Beijing, yeah. and you know, um, maybe you can share with us yeah. in one minute. Of course. Actually, I, I just counted how many cities I visited last year, and there were fourteen. So okay, uh, pretty wow, much. you traveled a lot. Yeah, I traveled a lot, and what I can say is China is so different. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. It's a huge, 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 huge country. We cannot even imagine how huge they are. Um, but I think I would start with um, Shenzhen or with Shanghai. These are the two main cities I would visit. I personally th feel Shenzhen is even more interesting when you look on an innovation perspective on it. Shanghai is really international investor. In, um, so it's also an interesting city, of course. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would start with Shenzhen. Uh, also Guangzhou, it's uh, next to it. Yeah. And there's so many other uh, interesting cities. I visited Xi'an, it's in the middle part of China. Um, Beijing is really, um, I also like Beijing, but it's more um, like, it's not so international, it's more Chinese city. But if, you re if you're really interested to the Chinese culture, and the, ch the culture is really great and humble and open, um, you have to go to the more tier two cities. They are the more smaller cities, uh, but also some tier one cities are also really interesting. So um, it's a very good point because there is a huge differentiation be be between people that they are touching high tech and investments, than the other people that they are mainly not even in the biggest cities in that's China. And but they are really big, that's the thing. When you talk about small in terms cities, of China. they have uh, 10 million people yeah. living there. So, um. Absolutely. And we do have our Berlin office in, in China. So like, if you would like to send a question or absolutely ask for introduction, we would be happy to do it with Enrico, myself, also Sabine is sitting there. And I would like to again invite Dr. Rainer Seider with actually a very good news because you know that Berlin Asia, let's call it community that we're building here with a lot of ambassadors and people that contribute for the growth of Berlin from the inside and from the outside uh, is really growing and Dr. Rainer Seider, happy to have you again in this table and please share with us an amazing news that you have today. Thank you, Mali. Thank you very much also to Enrico for this very inspiring interview or fireside chat. Um, and we, I learned a lot. And as you told, we have an office in Beijing, so it's uh, very important for us to know also where, where to go, where to be active. But that's, of course, not the news I, I would like to share. <laughs> yes. uh, the news I would like to share is that our website will be online in a few seconds. Um, okay. You already know that we had a, a long and, and very um, clear uh, renovation process uh, in, in our uh, Asia Berlin activities. We started with the Asia Pacific Week um, several months ago, and now we have the Asia Berlin Summit. We, we have a new design, a new logo. We, a new logo, so everything is new, so, and we are very happy that, it, that we have this process, so we use a bit the corona time to focus more on also the, the, the output, the visibility of our activities, especially for startups. So that's all about. And so, and today and from now on, we will have also a, a new website, a new design with a new logo, with a new content of the summit as well. And I would like to use this opportunity, this live opportunity to launch that website. And I will, well, that's fake, but uh, the website is not fake. I will now, Switch on the new website. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you to our speakers, Enrico and Mali and um, Dr. Rainer Sider. I hope you enjoyed the content and I hope you meet each other in our networking rooms. 
The link is uh, npac.online uh, slash uh, ab-networking. Uh, it's in the chat. So please uh, meet each other and um, I hope you make really great connections and see you just next month for our next community event. Thank you so much.